In January 2023, Google shut down the Stadia service. However, the Google Stadia controllers are not dead in the water, at least not yet. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to switch a Google Stadia controller to Bluetooth mode and use it on a Chromecast or with an Ubuntu Linux distribution. Huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. If you're working on a printed circuit board and you want a high quality prototype, visit PCBWay.com to order one at a good price. Furthermore, PCBWay also offers additional services such as assembly, CNC, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication and even injection molding. If you need an inspiration, have a look at the shared projects directory maintained by PCBWay. There are many retro computers and USB projects that you can order with a single click. Stadia was a cloud gaming service developed by Google. It was initially launched as a closed beta in 2018. A year later, in November 2019, uh, Stadia was released publicly so anyone could use it. However, the service never took off and at the beginning of 2023, less than five years after the launch of Stadia, Google shut it down. With the launch of the Stadia service, Google also released its own game controller and I have to say that the hardware is pretty cool. The controller has two thumbsticks, a directional pad, four main face buttons, two sets of shoulder buttons and five additional controller face buttons. To use the controller, players could either plug it into a compatible device with a USB-C cable or connect it over Wi-Fi. Well, the Wi-Fi option was available while the Stadia service was active. It's no longer available, but until the end of 2023, you can switch the controller to Bluetooth mode. There is a built-in battery that is charged over the USB-C cable. Google Stadia controllers were available in three different colors. Clearly white, just black and Wasabi. This is the mint green uh, controller that you see here. Also in the past, there was a Founders Edition bundle that included a limited edition of Midnight Blue controller. On the side of the Google Stadia controller, there is 3.5 mm headset jack, a microphone and a label plate. I have a couple of Google Stadia controllers. They're really cool hardware devices. So basically, this acts as a joystick while you are uh, playing games with the Google Stadia service. However, now Google Stadia service is no longer available, but you can still use these controllers. For a very limited time, until the end of 2023, Google allows you to update the firmware of your Google Stadia controller and switch to Bluetooth mode. Let me show you how you can do it. Google Stadia controller has a Bluetooth low energy radio. It is not enabled by default, but you can update the firmware from the Chrome web browser. You can do it on any computer, no matter what kind of operating system you have, Microsoft Windows, the Linux distribution or Mac OS, but you have to install the uh, Chrome web browser. Visit stadia.google.com slash controller. This website is going to be available until the end of 2023. It is highly recommended to charge your controller for 30 minutes before you start the process of the updating the firmware. First, allow Chrome to verify your controller. After that, follow the three easy steps to unlock your Stadia controller. This is needed to download firmware updates. Step number one, unplug your controller to power it off. After that, hold the button with the three dots while plugging in your controller to the USB-C cable. Step number three, you have to press the four keys simultaneously uh, as shown on your screen. There won't be any controller feedback, so go to the next step to confirm that the controller is unlocked. A pop-up window will appear, select your controller in this Chrome uh, device list again, then click connect. After that, click the allow Chrome to download button and wait until the firmware is downloaded and installed on your Google Stadia controller. Do not unplug your controller while the update is in progress. 
Once the update is uh, completed, you will see a notification in your web browser. If you miss the deadline and don't switch to Bluetooth mode by the end of 2023, you can still use the static controller with a USB-C cable. I have no idea what's going to happen after that, but I hope that some third-party solutions will appear and will allow you to switch to Bluetooth mode even if you miss the deadline set by Google. I've switched my controllers to Bluetooth mode, I have a Chromecast and I'm going to show you how to use a controller with a Chromecast. Google Study Controller doesn't work with any kind and models of Chromecast, but it works with Chromecast Ultra. I have one of these Chromecast attached to my LG TV and I'm going to use it for the demonstration. First, from the Chromecast settings, with the Chromecast remote control, I'm going to remote and accessories. The next step is to pair over Bluetooth the Google Study controller. The third step is to find appropriate applications and games that support the Google Study controller. I found some old simple games like this red ball here, and it's really fun to play it. As you have seen, it is super simple and straightforward to pair over Bluetooth a study controller with Chromecast Ultra. As an open source enthusiast, I'm a Linux user. And today I'm going to show you how to use this Google Stadia controller on Ubuntu Linux. The same steps can be applied to different Linux distributions with minor adjustments. I'm going to remap the keys on the Stadia controller to keyboard keys so that I can play some old games. Step number one. Press and hold the special Stadia button on the Stadia controller to enter Bluetooth pairing mode. Ubuntu is a very popular Linux distribution that nowadays comes with the GNOME desktop environment. So either open settings from a graphical user interface, go to Bluetooth, after that pair and connect to the study controller, or alternatively open a terminal and using the Bluetooth controls do the same, pair, connect and trust the Google study controller. After connecting Google study controller over Bluetooth to a personal computer, let's do a couple of tests to verify that it's working properly. My first test is in a command line interface. I'm going to use the EV test application to verify that the controller is detected and key codes are also recognized when a key is pressed physically on the controller. As you can see, EV test detects the controller and everything seems fine. Now I'm going to check the Google Study controller using the HTML5 gamepad test directly in a Chrome web browser. This is an HTML5 website that detects the joysticks and gives you an opportunity to try all the keys and to make sure that they're properly detected. The source code is available under MIT license in GitHub and this HTML5 gamepad test has been developed by Greg Tavares in 2019. Of course, it is universal not only for the study controllers and you can use it for testing other gamepads too. Obviously, the Google study controller works as expected and works fine, but in order to take advantage of it on Ubuntu Linux or another Linux distribution, we need special applications to match it key codes and to use them. Or we can have an alternative option we can remap the Google Study controllers to the keys that we need for the games and applications that we are already using. This is exactly what I'm going to do with an open source application that I recently discovered. It is called Input Remapper. This is an easy to use tool to change the behavior of input devices like Google Study Controller. It has been developed specially for Linux distribution and it supports both X11 and Wayland. Input Remapper has been developed using the popular Python programming language. It comes bundled with the system this service. The source code is available in GitHub. Huge thanks and kudos to Toby, the creator of this project, who shared the source code in GitHub under GPL version 3 license. Debian or Ubuntu users like me can download a pre-compiled Debian package from the release page or can grab the source code directly from GitHub. Using Input Remapper, I mapped the D part of the Google Study controller to the key codes for the arrows on a keyboard. 
there is one old game that I enjoy playing. It's super simple and it's called 2048. Basically, you have squares with different numbers and you have to put them together in order to uh, make the bigger and greater value. Of course, you can also use the Google Study controller on Ubuntu or another Linux distribution directly by connecting it with a USB-C cable. This is the easiest way to use a study controller and it will be available no matter if you have switched to Bluetooth mode or not. Please know that when the controller is connected over USB-C cable, Linux recognizes it, it as an, another input device compared to the Bluetooth mode that I showed you previously. This means that you have to configure the joystick again using Input Remapper and then in Input Remapper, uh, as in my case, you will end up with two different configurations, one for Bluetooth mode and one for USB-C. Once this is done, I can use the Google Study Controller on Ubuntu Linux for playing simple games, or not so simple games actually, or even some applications. As you can see, thanks to Input Remapper, everything works like a charm. So the bottom line of this video is that Google Study Controllers are super cool and although that Google completely shut down the Study service, you still have a chance to revive and use your controllers. So don't throw them away, at least not for the moment. And I'm pretty sure that in long term, these controllers will become some kind of collectibles by retro gamers and retro computer enthusiasts. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you like it. If so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.